What's up everyone? How are you doing today? This is Jeremy from Tie-Dye Tanks and I have another video in the series of the Tie-Dye 101 series today. And today we're going to be doing actually our first um, tie design that I'm going to be showing you all a tutorial about. And that is going to be the classic spiral. Yes. <laughs> The spiral is the classic design in tie-dye. It is the one that you probably will see first and most often. Uh, there are a lot of people that make a lot of money off of just making spirals. And I sell a lot of them when I go out. And I sell um, at shows and things like that because it's pretty much the one design that somebody will look at and say, that's, that's tie-dye. So, I'm going to show you guys how to tie and dye that today. And for that demonstration, I am going to get right into it. And I'm going to change the camera. So, give me just a minute, guys. Thank you. All right. We've got our shirt on the table here. This is a Gildan shirt, tagless, and I'm going to show you um, just how, uh, how I like to start my spirals. For one, you want to lay it down flat on the table like it is now. Smooth out as many wrinkles as you can, and make sure that it's even in places where it's supposed to be even. And on a spiral, you always want to start uh, in the middle. Of course, some people start on the side and do their spirals on the side. Uh, but to get your middle point, I always just put my finger right in the middle of where the tag is. And then I follow my finger down and make a straight line right to the armpit area. And that's usually where your spirals are going to start, uh, start on most of your spiral shirts. Now to make the spiral, I will just pinch up a bit of fabric. I'm sure you can see it right there. And I'll start spinning, spinning clockwise. Now, as you continue spinning, you're going to see it's going to try to pop up and things like that. You're just going to have to manipulate it as much as you can to keep going. Now, at a certain point, I'll actually just put my finger there. And I'll move the shirt around. And that's how I make my spines of my spiral. Voila. Now, I'm not showing you how to tie it. I'm not showing you the whole thing because I want to show you another method that I use to make my spirals look better and cleaner. So I'm going to put the shirt back up on the table. Now I will start at my same center spot, but I'm going to use a tool this time. And these are needle nose pliers. You can use other tools. I've seen things like uh, I don't know, uh, like a dowel rod with like a attachment on the front of it. Just use a screwdriver, whatever you can, to make the uh, spiral cleaner and crisper. So anyway. I go back to my original start point, and I will pinch up my fabric with this, and I'll put my hand on here, so that when I'm turning this, my spines don't start popping up. And I can even start using my hand to do some of the spinning, and eventually, like I did with the other one, I will just... Use, use my hands to manipulate it the rest of the way to make my spiral. Now, and this is pretty quickly tied, but as you can see, I'll go grab the camera and show you. As you can see, it is. Why is it that? There we go. 
it it's pretty well tied. I mean, I usually take a little bit more time on these things than I just did. Um, and uh, some people will even take a you know a while to make these. They'll make a pleated spiral design. And a pleated spiral is just you would t take every one of these little spines in here and make sure that they're like the same size and manipulate them to where they come out after you um, after you clean it out they look super sweet it's like the coolest spiral I think I've ever seen so I'm gonna get some rubber bands here which I have over here excuse me and to tie this up I always use the pie shape method for beginners I tell them to put the rubber bands on in a shape of pie wedges because this will give you basically an indicator of where you want to put your dies whenever you put your dies on. Now I usually start with eight bands like so. Or, I'm sorry, eight pie sections is what I meant to say. And uh, then I will go from there. Um, if I want to add more bands on there to make the sides sides nicer, I'll add a couple more bands. Um, if you're already experienced and know how you're going to put your die on there, then you don't really need to have the the bands put on there and wet. And, and, and wedges to indicate where you want to put your die because you know where you're going to put your die. So I always put just a few extra on. Oop, that one broke. All right. And as you can see, there's a quick spiral. And I'll just show you the back. And now I'm going to die that bad boy. All right. Let me get my tray, excuse me, I was unprepared here. <laughs> I use this tray for smaller jobs. If it's uh, something bigger, I use newspaper. I got it on my tray. And I got my dies over here. I'm going to do a rainbow rainbow die clean out my syringe and I'll show you what I'll be using to apply the die is this syringe here I've sh I showed it to uh, everybody in a video before it's a food injector and I just cut the tip off of there with the Dremel Moto tool and it's now a syringe for dyeing so I'm going to put my colors on first I'm going to start with yellow I always like to start with lighter colors first. So I'm going to do this in pie wedges because that's what a beginner should do. There are other ways to put dye on here, of course, to make the spiral look different. I'm going to make sure I cover that all. So there's no white exposed, and then I just go back for a couple more passes. I don't put too much on there. Now, I'm going to the orange, and I can go directly to the orange because yellow and orange, you use yellow to make orange. So, doing another pie wedge here. The orange, of course. This is deep orange. The oh yes, I forgot to tell you. The colors I will be using the yellow is lemon yellow, which is the primary. The orange is deep orange. The red I will be using is scarlet. The blue I will be using is turquoise. The green I will be using is bright green, and the purple I will be using is deep purple. And I also have some black in, one, in, in, in some of the other videos. I mix my own black dyes, so I don't tell anybody a specific one. So 
I uh, I use two or three different black dyes and mix them together. So. And now we're going to go to red, which is scarlet, like I said before. I like scarlet over Chinese red because Chinese red is a B-I-T-C-H <laughs> to mix. And you always get like a sediment in the bottom. So that's why I use scarlet. Usually I do these sitting down, but I'm using I'm doing it standing up so you guys can pay attention to the design and not to my beautiful face. Ha 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 ha. Make sure I got enough of that red on there. Red is notorious for being a dye that doesn't soak in as much. So you gotta put a little extra on there. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to green so I have to I have to clean out my syringe now green I'm using is bright green put that above the yellow of course you're doing a true rainbow it's gonna be red orange yellow green blue and purple Okay, I'm going to clean out my syringe and go to blue. And I'm making sure that when I go to this edge here, that I get all the way to the front, but I don't want to take over the other colors, so I'm doing, so I'm just taking my time. Whenever I get to that spot. Now this uh, spiral that I'm going to make, I'm going to explain when I turn it over to dye the other side. Um, this one is just going to be a regular spiral, but you can do different uh, variations of colors and stuff. After you turn it over. All right. Last but not least, we are going to do Deep Purple. Not the band. We're not doing smoke on the water here. We're doing tight. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm sorry. This isn't Deep Purple. I don't know why I said that. It's Blue Violet. Blue Violet is what I'm using for purple right now. Blue violet gives off a cool blue cast. So if you do have any white the areas, it's usually blue because of the cast. Okay, anyway, I've got this all dyed and I've got all my pie wedges dyed. I'll pull it a little bit closer and show it to you. So now I'm going to flip it over. And do and now I'm going to do the same thing as on this side. But like I explained before, there's different color variations you can do. You can slide all the slide all the colors over one and do like a, a reverse rainbow. Um, you can do black or any other solid color on the side. You could do, say, one half color and then one half another color. It's really your your choice but to show you a basic spiral I'm just going to dye it like a normal rainbow color go to the yellow and I don't have to saturate it as much as I did before 
gonna make sure that it's died, but you don't have to put that much in there because, of course, the other side was dyed pretty thoroughly. And I'm just putting the same color over the color that is on the other side. So yellow over yellow, orange over orange, red over red, etc. I'm going to go to purple really quick just because I already had red in there, so you can definitely do red and purple. Clean my syringe one more time. Go to blue. Turquoise. Turquoise down in there. Okay. And last but not least, the bright green. Okay, and there's the other side of it. All right. And then like with all of my dyes, I will take a bag. I use plastic grocery bags and I recycle them afterwards. So I'll grab it and put it in a bag. Make sure it's wrapped up. And there you go. And I'll let that sit for at least 24 hours. Um, if I'm doing shirts, I will actually let them sit for 48 hours. That's just my policy. Um, and then once this bad boy is ready, you'll rinse it out. And I will have a video on that procedure um, here soon. Um, and I'll, I'll actually rinse this shirt out. And I will reveal it in that video. And uh, I'll show you the proper rinsing techniques and uh, show you some secrets that I use. So tune back in here soon for the reveal of that one. I'll be doing another um, video here tonight that I'll be dropping on Sunday or Monday. And that is going to be on the scrunch. The scrunch is another um, staple in the tie-dye community that a lot of people like to do. So uh, if you like this video, this tutorial, give it a like. If you would like to see more tutorials in the future, Please subscribe, and let me get the camera up to say goodbye to you. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye.